So you guys kind of passed a lot of judgment, so I kind of wanted to address some of those comments today because, yeah, I just wanted to address some of those comments because I just feel like um, you guys just don't really understand. She tell me my love is your love, baby. She don't want the Gucci, uh -huh. body Fendi. Cause she give me butterflies in my bed. Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. You already know, it's your girl, Miss Mama D. You know what I'm saying? It's that Tavon nigga back, you know what I'm saying? Right in this motherfucker. Hey, yo. That's it. So if you're new to the channel, we're the G5 family. Welcome to the channel. So just to give you an idea type of content you can find on this channel, it's basically more like Ghana content, just us documenting our journey from living in Canada to Ghana, moving back to Canada, us building in Ghana, regular vlogs and, and pranks, right? And who? Pranks. <laughs> yeah, yeah, pranks, yeah. A lot of pranks, for Yeah. Sure. So please, if you're new to the channel, please hit the subscribe button, join the G5 family, hit that notification bell so you get notified whenever we post a video. You don't want to miss any videos, especially if you're more into like Ghana content because we're content because we're going to be talking a lot about our Ghana experience and so on and so forth. Mm -hmm. well, that's what we're doing today. Mm -hmm. So what are we doing today? What's it, what you got me saying in front of the camera today? What are we doing? Why would you still stop saying that? Nah, I got it. I'm, I'm here. <laughs> Well, we're on the G5 family. Y'all usually know yeah, I'm on my own channel, but today she got me and my mom on this channel today. Well, yeah. I'm trying to figure out, like, what are we doing today? What's the bill for today? Just shout out your channel. Shout out your channel. Y'all know what it is. It's, it's, it's Plus One KK. AK Cali K. You know? Yeah, so you guys go to Tavon's channel. Subscribe, subscribe. Subscribe. We're trying to roll to 1,000 subscribers right now. Right now we hit 200. So you guys subscribe, watch the video, like the video. All that good stuff. Appreciate it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, but what are we doing today though? The purpose of the video today is that I'm just maybe I'm we're just more responding to comments that were left under our video that I posted a couple weeks ago. So I posted a couple weeks ago a video up here. So you guys click on the video if you haven't watched it yet. About basically it's like it's called the event that led to us leaving Ghana. So a video of our son my well hear me, our sons. <laughs> These are my this is my son guys. Um, for those that are new. Basically in the video, if you haven't watched it, I just, it just basically shows my son leaving Ghana and me talking about how he left, how him leaving Ghana basically resulted in us all leaving Ghana. But the thing is, a lot of the people that were making these comments, I feel like you guys are new to our channel and you guys haven't watched our previous videos. So if you guys had watched our previous videos, you would have seen that we were doing a lot of school shopping in Ghana for Ghana schools, not for like American or not for like Canadian schools. We we're looking for Ghanaian schools, right? So if you guys haven't watched any of my previous videos, especially the video with me, with my kids shopping for schools in Ghana, please go watch the video. When we were moving to Ghana, it was really hard for me to find videos about other families, YouTubers that had kids that were like I didn't really find videos about that, like their experience, the type of schools they're putting mm. their kids in. So I want to make this video today to help you out. So if you're deciding that you want to move to Ghana, you got kids, just a little bit of our experience. It may not be pers may not technically be your experience, but just what to expect. And we just wanted to address some of the comments because we felt like some of the comments were negative. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know. And so, we got, so we got the first one right here. Um, what's the username? Wait, wait, no, no, not that one. Oh, you want that one? This is this is what started. This is what started off. Started everything off. Okay, this one. So, Ghana Diaries. My question. It's a long, it's a long question. My question is, why is there so many schools in Ghana very affordable and they teach very well? Many Ghana Ghanians are doing excellent abroad. Went to school. Went to these. Went, went to these schools and they and excelled. Some of us had our had our education in Ghana regular school and regular schools. And Tavon, you're lack, messing up, man. And we don't lack anything. I'm not a reader. How many? <laughs> at the top or top Ghanaians attended these American schools. Ghana public schools are the best. Please don't get stuck in the Western lie. So thank you, Ghana Diaries, for your comments. So, so can you give me the phone again? <laughs> the question was so long. Okay. So basically, um, what did she? What did you ask? There's so many very affordable schools. 
Okay, so as I said before, if you had watched our videos before, you know, I will put it in the description box below if you're interested in watching it. It's called School Shopping in Ghana. So my younger son did attend two Ghanaian schools. He actually attended Leed International School and he attended um, Crystal Heights International School. Um, but let me just put out there, there's nothing wrong with Ghanaian schools. Uh, my bigger son did not go to a Ghanaian school because he was in a 12th grade. And the time of the year we were looking at schools, the school was at the end of their school year. And for some reason in Ghana, um, they don't have grade 12. Like they go to like grade 11 or something, or it's just really complicated. And his age group is basically in their last semester. Even for my younger son, they were all in their last. Okay, so, sorry guys, our battery died, so we're back. So we're, I was saying that, I was responding to Ghana Diaries and I was basically saying the schools were in their last semester. So it was very difficult for me to put my son that's going into grade 12 into a Ghanaian school where they were in their last like couple of months. That didn't make any sense. And it was hard because he was going into grade 12, but a lot of the schools in Ghana did not go to grade 12 or I don't know, they weren't accepting it. I don't know, it was, it was very complex. They were requiring all these big exams and all these big government exams that they wanted him to write. It was just easier to put him into one of these American schools or Canadian schools because their system was very similar to our system. You literally just go, you register your child, they start, they start, I mean, their school year starts in August or in September. This registration is very easy. There's no big exam. There's no, it's just very straightforward where the Ghanaian schools, they're not. I definitely wanted to put him into a Ghanaian school. That's why we were in Ghana, right? We didn't come to Ghana to spend all this money to go to American schools. So next comment. All right. So PY20, exactly my thoughts. I think more about negative than negative perceptions than reality. So you have to say about that. Okay. So how I take this, how I take this comment, um, I don't think that we have a negative. They're talking about like a negative perception of Ghana. Hmm? So I think they're trying to say we have a negative perception of Ghana schools. Yeah. But I was just saying that it's not a negative perception. I'm saying that it's our experience. We had a bad experience. Mm -hmm. There's a difference between bad experience and negative perception. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. Right. So let me tell you, let me give you an example how I would say that it's like we had a bad experience, right? So when I went to, to put my, when I went to put my younger son in a Ghanaian school, they, they said that he has to write a, an exam, but they didn't explain that this was an entry exam. So you needed to pass in order to get into the school. We weren't aware of that. My son wrote the test and he didn't complete it. It was difficult and he didn't think it was important or whatever the case, he didn't complete it they said to us that he could not go not allow him in the school they they rejected him they said he's basically not smart enough to go to their school yeah like you know what i mean it's like that's awful you know what i mean like these are things that you have to go through when you put your kids in school like you have to like basically prove that you're smart enough to go to their school if that mm, makes nah, sense that's only when you want to school overseas you don't know the hell you are you weren't born in that country so of course you're gonna I'm saying they're gonna have to test you. I'm gonna like when it, when 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 you know you're coming from abroad, you're coming from a different country, and you're trying to get into their school. They're gonna obviously look at you funny because you don't know where the hell you're from and how you learned. You know. You yeah, know but the thing is, most schools, like schools out here, they would test you to see to see your strengths, to see your weaknesses. Yeah, but everywhere, everywhere, then they can every, help you. Everywhere is different, though. Every region in the world has different ways of how the um look at you know your your strength or your brain capacity to learn. Everywhere is different. Well, you can't just look at Canada and the United States. You play the world that people get punished and people, you know what I'm saying? Like, you go overseas and you bring Canadians to another country, especially Africa, it's going to be different for sure. So it's like, you got to still have an open mind. Like, basically, and just to, res to finish off the response to that comment, it's our, it's our reality. It's our experience. It may not necessarily be anybody else's experience, but it was ours experience. So mm -hmm. it is what it is. So, read the next question. Wait. Okay. Okay, Lisa Long. Are all the schools in Ghana 15K or just the one you're looking at? 
Okay, thanks for your comment, Lisa Long. Um, no, all the schools in Ghana are not like 15K, like ridiculous amounts. Um, but keep in mind that all the schools in Ghana come with a fee. Um, you have to pay for school fees, you have to pay for books, you have to pay for uniform, you have to pay for lunch, you have to pay for the bus. <laughs> My mom just said you even got to pay for toilet paper. Like, you got to pay for everything, right? Some of the schools are the, the more Ghana-based schools are in and around maybe between one and maybe 5,000 uh, a year in and around there for the Ghana-based schools. And then the prestigious American, international, British schools, Canadian schools, they start at like 15, 20,000. They go all the way up to like 60, 70. I don't even know what they go up to. I'm, like, I'm not even interested in even knowing how high they go up because that's just absurd. That's madness. Good question though. Yeah. The question is, why did you bring your kids from Ghana, from Canada to go to school in Ghana? Again, these are, I, it seems like you guys are new to the channel. Um, if you guys watch my previous videos or our previous videos, you would have known that we moved to Ghana. So we lived in Canada and we decided, well, I decided one day that I wanted to move to Ghana to give my kids a better life. Cause I feel, I felt like, and I still feel that way, that Ghana is where I want to raise my kids, kids in Ghana. I think, I think the, the upbringing, the upbringing is better than in the Western world where we currently are, unfortunately. But that's why I brought my kids, you know, to go to school in Ghana because I want to give them a better life. So. All right. Now, next question. Did you not do your research before you, before you moved to Ghana? You, this has to do with school. And okay. Then... So, I, I did my research and I came across a lot of schools and a lot of schools that I was coming across, I liked the schools. They were in and around the area that my mom um, lived. On paper, like I feel, I feel like on paper, like online, when you Google it, like, you know what I mean? It looks good and everything, it sounds good. But when you get there, it's different. Mm -hmm. Like a lot of the things that, they didn't, they didn't really give a lot of information. It was very minimal, I find. And I don't know, like I just, I didn't do enough infor research but I did a little bit of research where I felt comfortable. Um, but when you actually get to Ghana and you actually go through the process, like it's different. Like even going to Silicon Valley, they don't really tell you, like even when you're there to your face, they don't even tell you that, oh, like this is, this, this is a exam that your child has to pass. And if they don't pass, they don't get into the school. Like they don't even tell you that when you're there, they make you write the exam and then they tell you, oh, you didn't pass. Oh, sorry, go different school. So it's different when you're like in Canada and you're like on the computer. It's way different. Mm. Well, thanks for your comment. I guess Anyways. that answers your question, bro. Anyways. Uh, What's the next question? How come you did not... Re what? Return to Ghana. After your son graduated. Yeah, why, why, why? Why are you returning back to Ghana? Yeah, that's a big... It's a big question. Why she go back? She has a whole business out there. She invested almost, I'm not going to say how much money she, you know what I'm saying? But she invests a lot of money on some properties out there. So boom. She, why are you about to answer? It's a good question. Why didn't question. you stay in Ghana with us? Nah, you I know got, I have all your business I got, opportunities. I got school, content, music. I got mad things going on for myself. I'm still mad young. Like, what the hell? I'm like, what the hell? Because you're young, you can't be, you can't live in Ghana? <laughs> come on, bro. So you want me to trust with the college in Ghana and trust with the YouTube in Ghana and the music in Ghana? You so can... like, bro, like, come on, bro. Come on. Like, be realistic, bro. Let's be realistic. Okay, so Let's be realistic. All right, let this. me just answer their question. Right, right. So the reason why we didn't go back to Ghana after my son's graduation was because before we even left Ghana, my mom, okay, before we left Ghana, my younger son, Xavier, who was kind of bouncing around schools, he wasn't really adapting and doing well. So before we left Ghana, my mom had a conversation with me and said, if you're gonna leave Ghana to go for your son's graduation in Canada, she goes, you take Xavier with you and put him back in school in Canada because he's not doing well here academically, socially, mentally, like on, like he just wasn't doing well. Like <laughs> what are you doing? He wasn't doing well. And my mom was just like, take him back to where he can thrive and be successful in his school and, and where he, 
Like, it's, is he thriving all year? Let's be honest. Is he thriving? <laughs> yes, he's thriving. This guy's a hater. He's always hating on his brothers. I'm a hater. I'm a realistic person. But that's why we didn't go back because before we even left, we'd made up our mind that I'm going to make my Xavier, my younger son, go to school out here for a little bit till he gets a little bit older and we'll see how it goes. And now I know there's online school. Oh, there's another question about that actually. Okay, I'll get back, I'll get to that question in a sec. So we're basically just, I was just hoping and waiting for him to get a little bit older where he's more mature and where he can probably, you know, adapt. And now that it's gonna be a second time going to school in Ghana, he'd be a little bit older. So I hope that answers your question. Hope it did. Yeah. But well, yeah, next question. What was the question you were just talking about right now? Okay, go to that question. I saw it on, I saw it tell me they posted it like that question was um right away. No. Wait, 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 let's go to, go to that question. Rooster eleven. Have you thought about homeschool options? Okay. So oh my god. No, I didn't okay. I got three likes, so it's a good question. So people <laughs> actually they agree. A whole three like things, guys. Okay, so yes, I thought about homeschool. Um, I thought about it, but because we're moving from Canada to Ghana, one, my kids don't know the language. One, my kids did not want to go to Ghana. One, am I going one? One, two, three, three. I, okay, I basically, I wanted my kids to be enrolled in school so they can be, they can have friends and have a social life and they can try to learn about the culture, the language, the food, where they can fit in and feel like a normal kid. I don't didn't want them to be stuck in the so house. You never thought it ever crossed your mind, ever in your mind that maybe going abroad and going to a school with a bunch of Africans, which we are. Why Africans, are you gonna see like, like that? But real freshy Africans that are born out there. Mm -hmm. I'm too close, but too much. You ever thought that being around freshy Africans was gonna make? them feel awkward or feel like out of place you only never obviously thought. they're gonna feel out of place but over time you're gonna feel like you're gonna start to feel like you know like you're gonna blend in you're yeah. gonna know the you're gonna learn the language you're gonna be speaking Man, it with this them is, this, this xavier not, was doing like watch, the pigeon you, you watch you watch too many movies bro like where, where, where it's kid like, you, like karate kid you move to the country you didn't like it and they're like it after like a month or two come on bro it's realistic bro no like, you, your kids are not like little kids like they're growing like they're that's why I was I didn't want to homeschool them because I I know that it's important for kids to have a social life to have friends to go outside to play around. But have a social you know life what I mean? That, you can't have a social life here if you're being homeschooled like you probably could. We didn't know a lot of people in Ghana. We were just meeting people in Ghana. We didn't know a lot of people, so we were also making friends too and you know networking and meeting people. Like so, it was like you know we I I just under I just understood how important it was for kids to be around other kids. And I wanted my kids to be able to like learn learn tree. Like at home, they don't learn tree because yeah, everyone speaks she, she English. She's been trying to try to teach us tree for the last three, four years since I was nineteen, bro, twenty, bro. It's too late for that. Mm -hmm. She taught us tree when I was nearly my twenties. But anyways, the point is that we grew up in a uh, in a very like Canadian home. Like we pretty much spoke English. Okay. Even though grandma always spoke tree, but also grandma would speak English too. So. Like your dad, your dad is not even Ghanaian, so you know he never, he didn't, he does, he didn't. Not like we can speak tree back and forth. So, anyways, I just I wanted them to be able to get outside and just meet people, have fun, have friends, have a social life, and I didn't think they can achieve that being homeschooled, basically. All right, answer your question is Drewski. I mean, Drewster, eleven. Thanks for your question. All right, um, then we have one more question and I think we're, we're out of here. Last question is, why did you spend 4,000 cities on a driver when you have a car? That's a good question. You have two cars, matter of fact, in Ghana. And, <laughs> okay. And you travel far distance too. No problems, no maintenance. Um, okay, I used to spend a lot of money on Uber to get my son to school because he went to school about an hour away from our home. And that was the only school that we could find for him, unfortunately. Um, I had my other son that needed to be dropped off to school. 
and I also needed to be at the site. So we're building at the time and I needed to be at the site all the time. And I had a younger son with me. I had it at the time, Prince was only two or three years old. And um, there was only one car that was registered, which was my vehicle. Cause in Ghana, if you don't have your plate registered, if you have like a DV, you have to sign when you're, where you're going, when you're coming back. Like it's just, a, it's a, you, get has, you get harassed a lot by the Ghanaian police if your plates are not registered. So it just made sense. I needed another person. I needed another person to take him. Um, so we were just searching for people in and around our area, like drivers that were in our area that would take him. But then they would stop taking him because they didn't think it was worth it. And then we just, so we ended up getting an Uber driver. And then they also were like, oh my God, there's so much traffic. Like, and plus it takes so long. Like it just takes so we, much we out we of your day. We live in the trenches. We, live, we don't live in the city. We live in the trenches. We live in, we live like, we're like borderline village. <laughs> Yo, this, this, kid's a, this kid's mad. He's, he's, a, he's, a, he's a fool. Don't listen to this guy. He's, oh, he's sure. a fool. I'm telling you. Right? Yeah, I'm trying to tell you. We didn't live in the we village live, or the live, trenches. We, we, we just live, lived. We live borderline village. So we live, we live in the city? We live in a, we live in a crop. Yeah, but where do we live? The we outskirts live, of a crop. We live, we live in, they were all dirty. So this is, this is the, this is the big, the this area. Big, this is the big city on the outskirts. And we live like right in the middle. Like we're in like the trenches. No. We're in the trenches. Listen. If we didn't have that house, the house would be living in the trenches. Like this house, okay, I'm not me stop bullshit. There is houses out there. People do build houses out there. There's people that live in Italy. There's one guy's name is um what's the guy's name? Um What was his name? Oh shoot, where's grandma? Oh shoot. I don't care, but I don't oh, shit, what's his name? But yeah, he's from Italy. He had a big house. Yeah, he has a big the house. Is, we won't live in the trenches. Let me stop. There's house people, people do from living in Canada, living in the states, living in different like countries in the world. They do come build houses, and there's actually houses in there we live. So it's not that bad. It just where we live is just like the roads are bad as shit. But like because it's undeveloped, you know what I mean? Like that's the problem. Like it's we live in we lived in the city, but in the area that was not really developed. Our house in our area, like. It didn't, like just our like little bubble, like our little bubble was developed, but once you leave our compound, everywhere else is not developed. You know, mm -hmm. the roads are bumpy. Exactly. Yeah. Trenchers roads. It's trenchers roads, but not it, the trenches. There's no pavement on the floor. On the floor. Well, eventually, after you gotta drive out. Yeah, yeah. For like ten yeah, to fifteen maybe, minutes. We might have pavement, but nobody else has pavement. Yeah, you can't control it, guys. There's a lot of traffic all the time, and plus they were doing they were doing construction trying to expand the roads and in Ghana they take forever to expand the roads so there's always traffic there's always construction and just like the school was literally only 45 minutes away but I kid you not it took like two almost close to two hours to get him there and over two hours to get him back and I, I wasn't about driving all nah I can't I can't do all that driving no sir no 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 I would make sense to just pay somebody I guess so makes sense but yeah, that's, that's why the, he had a driver. That's the summer, summer. And they failed us. Well, guys, I hope we answered all your questions for today, man. Um, yeah. If you have anything that you want to ask about, you know, anything about Ghana and if we're going to move back or if we're going to any other country in Africa. We are going to move back to Ghana, though. But if you guys want us to move to Egypt or anywhere else in the world, you know what I'm saying? You know, so we have like different people in our, you know, in our comment section, you know, we'll do that. Just give us like, a, like 500 likes. But comment down, man, please. We want... A lot of more interesting comments. We can answer like this again. We can do more Q and A's, and you know what I'm saying. We can make, make interaction with the, you know our viewers. You know, happen a lot more. Subscribe to my channel first of all. Plug in with KK. We're on the right. Yeah, channel. subscribe to his channel, guys. Subscribe to my channel. You know what I'm saying. If you guys want to see fun content, like content that you know what I'm saying, that young, you know that the YNs do, the, the young niggas do. Subscribe to my shit. Um, plug in with KK. P L U G G E D I N W I T K K. Yeah. Put on KK, boom. So yeah, subscribe to that. Yeah, yeah. Subscribe. If you guys want to see all that fun stuff, but yeah. So, anyways, um, thanks for watching. As he said, thanks for watching. Subscribe yeah. if you enjoyed the video. I hope oh. that this cleared up, uh, cleared the air for those that were thinking that we had like a negative perception. We just wanted to put our kids in like com American Canadian schools. We were just being bougie and whatnot. You know, I hope this. Kind of clear there. I will maybe try to do. I always tell a movie. I never, I never end up doing the video. So what? I'm probably gonna try to do a video talking about like making a part two of this video right here of shopping. What's it called? Um, school shopping in Ghana for my Canadian kids. Just to kind of just talk more about it for those that are interested. If you're 
thinking about moving to Ghana, you got kids, you know, just kind of like our experience and kind of what we went through and what you can expect, you know, but I kind of touched upon it a little bit in this video, but um, you know, maybe I might go into more detail. I don't know, depending on how this video does. Yeah, man, give, her, get, get the vids for 100 likes. Um, comment down, we need like mad comments so we can respond and do a part three to this. If you guys do want it or if you guys want, let's just keep going for it and then you guys are violate us, violate us down the line somewhere else. <laughs> give us more comments to respond to for that video. But thanks for everybody that commented though. We appreciate your comments, even yeah. though it's we can't pronounce some off. of your names and some of your names are kind of weird, but we still responded. Some of them were just like like numbers and like yeah. like just numbers, like yeah. just I don't and know. Like, and like I couldn't pronounce half of that shit. You know, you guys can't I can't spell, I can't read, I can't read right. You know what I'm saying? It's bad. But anyways, end of the video. Yeah, subscribe. Appreciate you guys. Love you guys. Yeah, all that good stuff, man. But yeah, don't forget subscribe. But Turn post notifications and comment like yeah you know capital letter cali k ak my fully go fully government name tavon is out wow. peace out guys god bless uh you gotta watch this name so right up in the band oh eyes going red nigga you know i'm gonna